If you're still using JavaScript, I've got nothing but respect for you. You're playing web dev on hardcore mode. You're playing with new assistance from the computer. You got friendly fire mode off. If you want to shoot yourself in the foot, you can shoot yourself in the foot. Or better yet, you got your freaking teammate who you work with every single day, thinks it's appropriate to store a phone number as an integer. And so when you pass in a string and they add a trillion to add the one in front that you have to for US phone numbers, it breaks the entire thing, prod goes down, because you're testing in prod, and that's hardcore mode. I'm not cut out for it. That's why I have the TypeScript compiler just kind of sitting there over me, watching my every move. And as soon as I do something wrong, it's like, eh, eh, eh. Here's a five page MLA formatted error message to tell you what you're doing wrong and how to fix it. And TypeScript 4.0 recently came out, and I wanna talk about all the major breaking changes in this release, which means this video is already over because there's not any. Just kidding. There's actually no major breaking changes in this release, but there are some cool non-breaking changes, which we're going to talk about. But some of you are probably like, whoa, Ben, the Simver Bible literally tells us if it's a 4.0 release, it has to be a giant breaking behemoth. And well, not everyone lives in the Simver bubble and TypeScript is outside of that community. If you're out of the loop and not sure why TypeScript doesn't follow Simver, it's because the trade-off for getting millions of dollars of engineering investment in the TypeScript project is that marketing gets to control version numbers to a certain extent. So basically the version number for TypeScript is meaningless, kind of like most of my side projects. And maybe you want me to roast TypeScript because of that and that they should follow Simver, but honestly, I could kind of just care less. Though I am kind of curious how the conversation went with marketing, where marketing was just kind of like, yeah, you listen to us on how you version your code. So yeah, we're gonna be signing off on the TypeScript budget here, but there's gonna be one little condition. We're gonna to have to control how you guys version your releases. The last time we gave control to the engineers, they kind of did a practical joke on the Windows release and released 420, and they thought it was very funny. But uh, what ended up happening is I got a personal call from Bill Gates himself reprimanding me after it inspired his son to try out a blunt. And so, yeah, we're gonna have to kind of step in and uh, let you know what version it should be. All right, let's jump into the release notes now. The first thing is these Varadic, Veridic, I don't know, we'll call it var tuple types, where there wasn't a great way to express them before in TypeScript. If you wanted to say concat to tuples, You'd have to write something like this for the type, which is absolutely disgusting and would only work for a set length. So basically the idea is you want TypeScript to be able to infer if you have two tuples, you concatenate them together what the end length is going to be. And so now let me show you with, with the new syntax how you can, you can get this result that you want. So let me show you the old concat. Say we have tuple one and tuple two here just one, two, three, four. If we used old concat, we may define it like this. And this is just straight from their example. You have a generic T, generic U, and then the end result is an array where it's T or U. So if I hover over this, we can see the type is a number array. But with the new concat, how we can define it is you'll notice the main difference is what we return is instead of an array, we just use like the spread operator here. And so the result of new array here is you'll notice we actually get a tuple returned here where we know the length of this is four numbers. And this gets really cool too. Right now I just have four numbers. What if I convert these two strings, right? Well, of course, capital S. What are we, heathens? And uh, A, B. And now if we look at old array, that's gonna give us an array of numbers or strings. But if we look at the new array down here, we now have a tuple where we see that inside of that tuple, it's num num and then string string. Next, you can now have named tuples. So we have the type range here and it's a tuple and you can say the first element is the start and the second element is end. And this is for documentation and tooling it says. And so like for the most part, if you like hover over it in VS Code or whatever, it's gonna give you IntelliSense and you can see that what the items is. So it's gonna be helpful if you're like a library author and you can now label these things. And when people are using tuples, you can know what each element means. Okay, the next change I'm actually pretty excited about because I ran into this all the time when using classes. When you have the properties here, you'd have to explicitly set the types of these properties even though you set them in your constructor. And so now TypeScript can infer that, which is beautiful. I think the more inference that TypeScript can do, the better. They're adding three new operators, and equal, or equal, or question mark equal. Whereas before you might write A is equal to A or B. 
and now you can just write a or equal b which i think is pretty nifty but i will probably never use this i don't think i've really ever written code like this before i very rarely like reassign things to themselves so i might use this on like a rare occasion but i'm still excited to see stuff like this because i like typescript adding new things to the language this is a small change but now when you try catch things you can actually set the parameter to be unknown instead of any so by default x is any and this is a little bit less safe because you know you can do whatever you want with it and so now what you can do is you can stick any here or not any unknown and then that's going to force the programmer the developer to either do an if check to see what the type of it is or explicitly cast the error so you know what the type of it is so it's a tiny bit safer uh, this way there's this new custom jsx factories that i actually have no idea what the heck they're talking about here i assume this is probably relevant to like react library authors or i guess preact in this case so yeah i'm just ignoring it i love performance improvements and there's a couple of them in this release the first one has to do with the incremental flag this has been a flag before but apparently it wasn't really working properly with no emit on error i didn't use this that much so i didn't know about this but it wasn't actually caching the ts build info so it wasn't actually any faster on increment uh, and before you couldn't actually use no emit and increment together but now you can so bam there you go the second one is pretty sweet and it's going to improve as you use typescript in your editor it is partial editing mode so right now if you just open up a large typescript project it takes a little bit for the language server to load everything and parse the entire project or whatever the heck it does and then for you to actually be able to hover and see the types and stuff and apparently it was taking between 20 seconds to a minute until TypeScript was responsible or responsive for Visual Studio Code codebase. And in the new mode, it's going to basically, the file you're on, it's going to parse that first, and so it's going to be interactive. And so it has cut it down to being interactive within two to five seconds for their big code base, which just seems like a big win. Note, it only looks like it's available in the Visual Studio Code Insiders version right now. So rip if you're using any other editor and you're gonna have to wait a little bit if you're just on stable VS Code. Uh, but yeah, maybe it's time for you to switch over to VS Code. They're also making auto imports better. Before it wouldn't actually import from a package until you've actually imported from that package before somewhere in your project. And so now it looks like they're going to parse your package.json or some garbage like that and have that information. So it's going to be able to auto import the first time, which is fantastic because all I do is auto import. So uh, I'm going to be a happy customer. And that's pretty much it. It looks like there's a couple of breaking changes here at the end, which won't affect too many people. And that is TypeScript 4.0. So yeah, remember if you ever get tired of playing on hardcore mode, you can always come join me and play some TypeScript.